Next up in the den is Paul Westerman from Cambridgeshire. He's having to work hard to keep his nerves under wraps. Well, the feeling about going into the den, it's, it's a mixture of excitement and sheer fear. I've been in situations where I've presented before, but this is on another level. Nerves aside, Paul feels he's found a solution to a very serious problem. There's nothing like this on the market at all. What's that, feet tickler? And it certainly has the dragons intrigued. Plastic bras for travel. What, for your...? Yeah, well, man boobs included. I definitely get a sense of doing good with what we're trying to accomplish. So, yeah, I'm incredibly proud to be part of this. Hello, Dragons. I'm Paul Westerman. I'm the managing director of a company called RBR Active Limited. We're the company behind the RBR Leg Flow, which is a clinically researched, clinically trialled deep vein thrombosis prevention device. I'm here today to secure a £50,000 investment for a 15% equity in the business. On the 12th of April 2011, nine days before I was about to be married, I collapsed to the floor dead. I had suffered a massive bilateral pulmonary embolism. I'd injured my knee a couple of weeks beforehand and unbeknown to me, I'd developed a deep vein thrombosis through my right leg. I survived, obviously, fortunately. Research shows that after just 90 minutes of being sedentary, so sat at a desk, flying, gaming, in hospital, blood flow to the lower limbs has decreased by up to 50%. That decrease is what causes a DVT to start. And the solution is this amazing product called the RBR Leg Flow. And it is shown to increase blood flow over tenfold whilst the person is sedentary and using it. Now, in your boxes, you obviously have a, your very own RBR leg flow. A poignant pitch from Paul Westerman, whose product aims to prevent deep vein thrombosis. Basically, I mean, obviously, you travel first class, so you have probably bigger seats than these. The first exercise, your foot goes on your on ball your feet and you lift your heel. Paul's looking to secure a £50,000 investment for a 15% share in his company. Second exercise, put your heel on it and you raise your toes. Really simple, really effective. For Peter Jones, it's a problem of which he's already painfully aware. Paul, hi. Um, hi I know that this is an issue. I was coming back on a flight from Los Angeles and I basically ended up in a hospital in Windsor with a tube in my groin and it was without doubt because I wasn't moving for a long period of time. And ever since, I've done exactly the same as you. I literally move all the time. And even when I'm sitting in this chair, I will move. Yeah, shouldn't cross your legs. You shouldn't cross your legs, I know, and I, but I, I, and I end up doing this and then changing over. Um, so I know it's a real issue and and sadly, many people have lost their lives yeah. over this problem. Yep. Um, I think it's a really, it's a good product that you've you've come up with. Thank you. Because I actually think you you could have something here that could go into airlines and certainly care homes. Very yeah. very important. The market sizes are are staggering. For example, Qantas fly over forty million passengers a year. Prior to COVID, we were in discussion to onboard some of their flights. Um, obviously, with COVID, the flights have stopped. However, we are still in regular contact with the chief medical officer of the airline. And also, the NHS admit millions of patients every year. And people who game regularly online, it's 36 million people in the UK. So the, the markets are daunting. Paul's confident that there's a large customer base for his device. Sarah Davies launched her multi-million pound business with a gadget that she came up with. And it looks like she spotted a potential issue with the design of the entrepreneur's invention. I think the product's brilliant. My concern is I have a massive bag and I carry all sorts when I fly. There's absolutely no way I could go and fit this inside my bag that I'm taking as well. You know, had you designed a version that 
turns inside itself, the two cups fit together and then swivels out and opens up. That would have been more conducive to travel. You know, like when you pack your bras, when you go away, yeah. you put the two cups inside yeah. each other and pack. I was going to use shoes as an example, but you will go for bras. I'll go for bras. Yeah. They look similar. That, um, that can be easily done. Um, so you've really clearly and well described the problem, which we, I think, a lot of people recognise. Yep. Um, but you've been going quite a while and you didn't give us any financials. So are you trading? And if so, give me an idea of what that looks like. We started in 2018, and we didn't trade in 2018, but we did invest £30,000. 2019 to 20, we invested 40000 and 20 to 21, turnover has been 6500 uh, We've invested a further 20000 so we are still at the moment running us a net loss. And how much would I pay for one of these? Retail price is £24.99. Oh, gosh, and how much oh. do, they, how much do they, they cost you to make? Um, with the packaging and everything, round, round about the £2.30 mark. You should be able to get your cost of manufacturing, even packaged, you should be looking at £1.50. Yeah. And you want to be selling these out at £9.99. OK. And it makes it accessible to the masses. At £24.99, it's not. The product's price point isn't quite on the money for Sarah Davies. Now, Stephen Bartlett wants to discover how it can appeal to the masses. First of all, just wanted to congratulate you for turning your pain and hardship that you went through into your purpose. Yep. But both you and Peter had no idea that this was going to happen before it did. And in terms of getting people to buy a product that they don't anticipate they're going to need, I find that to be quite, quite a tricky task. You're quite right. Until you, you know about it, you don't perceive it as a problem. So you don't end up, you, don't, you wouldn't buy a product if you didn't realise it was a problem. So our, our awareness is, is one thing, is a key thing that we will be working on and continue to work on. When I, when I look at this thing that I'm wearing on my wrist yep. right now, it gives me a reminder every hour, if I'm not breathing heavily enough, to breathe. It'll, it'll vibrate and say, Steve, you need to breathe. I believe this kind of wearable tech will probably also aid in that solution. Um, that's my belief about the future. The Den's youngest dragon, Stephen Bartlett, believes that smart technology will fly in the face of success for Paul's product. Deborah Meaden wants to know what the entrepreneur has done to protect his gadget from copycats. Can you just talk around the IP on this? Patents? Well, we've got trademark on, on the name and everything. No um, patent protection? No, no patents, I don't believe. Well, we've got design, design rights. Right, so there is, this isn't patent protected, this is design rights. Yeah, oh, sorry, yeah. OK. You have a big, big risk. This is so easy to copy. My sister, who is in a wheelchair, has got a sort of dome-shaped yeah. pillow that's got these things on, yeah. that she sits and does that, okay. you know, to yeah. keep her blood circulation yeah. going. So there's already something out there that does that. Okay. Did you know that? No. If this isn't patented now, yeah. you can't retrospectively go back and patent okay. it. Which I think massively reduces how valuable this proposition is to an investor. Yeah. I just don't, I don't see a pathway through that. I worry that there's no value in this to be able to take it to the next level. So um, all the best, Paul. I'm out. Okay. The revelation that the product has no patent hasn't gone down well with Sarah Davies, who becomes the first dragon out. Will Stephen Bartlett be willing to bring the ailing pitch back to life with an offer? I think what you've got here is a product that will help some people, but I can't see it becoming a really lucrative business to the point that it would return an investment for me as an investor. Um, and I. I would be very careful, if I were you, about pumping more money into it. It'll probably take hundreds of thousands yeah. to drive the awareness you need to change behaviour. And for that reason, I'm going to say that I'm up for. So, um, I, I wish I could... I wish you'd had a patent. Um, but, Paul, I'm afraid, because of the IP, yeah. I don't see it as an investment. Okay, but I do wish you all the luck. But I'm afraid I'm out.
I, I don't want to sit here now and spend a lot of time on this because I don't think you're going to be... If you came here with a patent, I think it would be a very, slightly different conversation. So it's not an investment for me today. I'm going to say that I'm out, but, but you know, well done and good luck. Peter Jones disembarks from proceedings and Paul's hopes for investment are hanging by the slimmest of threads. Does Tuka Suleiman see anything the others have missed? Look, it is not investable as it is. There's a lot of question marks unanswered. You know, patent, market, whatever. But I'm willing to explore if it is investable. What interests me is you said you've done clinical trials. Yeah. Clinical trials normally take years. Yeah. So how long was that process? It was three and a half years right. in New Zealand. We have all the trial documents and uh, literature, as well as the research papers. Right. And have you shown this to the NHS? No. And um, when you talk about airlines, yeah. are these reusable? Yeah. I think you need a chance to show this to a few people to get a reaction. Yeah. Yeah. I've got contacts with the NHS. Yeah. I've got contacts with the airlines. So anyone would find out. Yeah. You yeah. know? One revenue stream we were thinking of potentially is hire them out for five pounds per flight. Mm -hmm. Give them the rinse afterwards. Okay. All right. And also in a vending Paul, vending you want, you well. want me to make you an offer? I would love you to, Tuka. Okay. Well look, I'm willing to explore the unknown. Thank you. Yeah? Yeah. Because you've got a lot of unknowns here. So I'm willing to give you the, the whole 50,000, but I want 35%. And do I go to the wall and... Talks a lot of sense, our wall. There's no, there's no point. We want this product being used. We want the product being shown to people and talked about. I'm more than happy with those terms. Great. And I'd love to be working with you. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Go with it. Thank you. Paul, I hope Cheers. I can make your dreams come true. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Paul has done it. He leaves the den with the £50,000 he was originally seeking and the backing of a dragon with the expertise to turbocharge his business. That was an amazing experience. I am emotionally shattered and exhilarated at the same time. You've given somebody a real lifeline there. That's fantastic. With Tuka's involvement, I, I really do believe it may fly, no pun intended, and the next 18 months is going to be absolutely crazy but fantastic.